fundamental knowledge in marketing will come very handy. Na? For, for some of us, sometimes we know it already. Uh, some may know it, but don't realize that they know it already. And then when they hear it, ay, oo, oo yung pala yun. No? So let me ask you something by doing another Mentimeter. Yeah. <laughs> Please uh, open your Mentimeter. Wait, uh, let me, let me, let me unshare and uh, go into the Mentimeter so everyone can, ay, hindi yan. No, no, no. Where's my Mentimeter? Wait, wait, wait. Sige, open nyo na lang yan and I will try to open my Mentimeter. Okay. Nakikita nyo ba? Everyone? Yes. Yeah. So everyone uh, talks in Tagalog, no? If if I get up kasi if I uh, I talk in Tagalog and then hindi pala naintindan. Oy, okay. What one word comes to mind if we talk about marketing? Wow, meron siyang product, price, place, promo. So I'm not going to have a hard time here. It's going to be very easy because that is precisely what I will be talking about. Isa pa lang ang nag-comment. Can anybody else please use the Mentimeter? Customer value, billboard, sponsored. What else? Come on, keep it coming. Ads, sponsored, yeah. Promotion, added sales, uh, supply and demand, advertising. Wow, dami. Oh, dami. Digital marketing, yes. All of those, all of those we will really be discussing today, interaction and uh, top here uh, because a lot of people have, wrote advertising that's why it's the most uh, bold one so thank you very much for sharing with us your thoughts on what is marketing yeah so marketing according to a book uh, entitled principles of marketing yeah uh, by um, armstrong uh, marketing has been designed defined rather as social and the uh, managerial process by which individuals and groups obtain what they need and want through creating and exchanging products and values with others. Huh? So bakit natin sinabing social? Because marketing is the means by which you study what your customer needs and want. And you don't only study them, you study them, what they want, what they need, and then you provide them. No? So uh, it, it's important, but before we go into uh, a specific selling, we know what the customers want before we offer it to them. There is even a term being used, relationship marketing, because it's social, dealing with people. For me, the mere smile of your tindera is already marketing. If your Tindera never smiles, most likely few people will buy. And if ever they're, they're buying, it's because it's necessary. Marketing will get you more demand of your product and achieve more sales. If it's giving more value to the product or service you offer, that results to attracting more customer. I remember uh, you look at the guy in front if you are going to buy something uh, and these two persons are selling the same product, where do you think anybody will buy? Uh, even if the, the guy on top uh, is selling in a not very well uh, made uh, restaurant, while the other is, it looks like a high-end restaurant, but the mere smile would already attract uh, attention to buyers. 
Marketing can also be defined as identifying, anticipating, and satisfying requirements of the customers profitably. Profitably. So you need to earn something, of course. This means businesses are looking for opportunities in the marketing market, working to attract new customers as well as keeping existing customers satisfied. So when you have already your, your customer base, it's important to keep them so, so they will become loyal and continue to make purchases. And doing this is a way that means they are, your revenue or money coming in are not exceeding by the cost or the money going out. Okay. So marketing is also a tool used by companies, organizations, and people to change our perception. Huh? If you will uh, watch commercials and advertisements, they are trying to change the perception of something, of, of people into something. They're persuading us to buy something. Huh? And uh, for us to be able to buy something, we need to change our behavior. The most effective marketing uses a well-designed strategy and a variety of techniques to alter how people think about and interact with the product in question. So those less effective marketing causes people to be turned off, tuned out, or not even notice the product, probably because it doesn't satisfy the needs of the consumer. As a business owner, it is your aim to get more sales. We know that. Gain competitive advantage above all of your competitors and earn more profit through the product or service you offer. Marketing is the way to achieve these goals. So marketing is a strategy in selling your product or service. When, when we talk pro about product, we also talk about service. It may be product or service to your customer. It is building the awareness of your product and promoting your product through you know, adver advertisement you mentioned earlier, sponsorships, and all the things that you have written in the Mentimeter. It also includes how you reach out to your customers through your distribution channel whether retail or online, okay? So to understand more, let me ask you, and you can answer probably by opening your microphone or putting in the chat box. Why do people buy any product? Or why do people buy any product over other products? Please write on the chat box. So it says here, quality, great customer service, yeah. well advertised, mm -hmm. customer service, cheap, because I like it and value for money is great, okay. uniqueness of product, attractive marketing. Yeah, yeah. So you, you said it all. Huh? So uh, the reason that customers select one product over another, another product, are based on their needs and wants. So if you want something, you have to look for it. Like uh, a need is something required or essential that is lacking. Like, for example, uh, you need food for you to be able to survive. You need the uh, ano, lugaw <laughs> as an essential thing. Uh, you want uh, something to eat. So that is essential. That's a need. While a want is something that's desired but may or may not be essential. Like I want a cheeseburger. You will be full with or you will quench your, your hunger or thirst with anything but you specifically want a cheeseburger, so that's a want. So all people have needs and wants, even us. But not all people needs and wants 
at the same thing and and it's not at the same time you may need uh food right now uh some people may need food in another time or uh or another day uh some may be eating not that not that great uh, but others are eating more often so the difference in people's needs and want account for the variety of goods and services that are available like for example, the barangay has announced that there will be a lockdown for one week starting tomorrow. So most of us would be hurrying to the grocery to purchase one week supply, one week stock. You buy essential goods. And most of the time uh, with this kind of emergency, you really don't look at the brand. What you really look for is anything that's available in the grocery that you need like food, biscuits, bread, rice, canned goods. So you, you're not very particular with the brand anymore. But in a regular scenario, in a regular day, you will most likely look for your prefer, preferred brands. Okay, so um, there are common types, two common types of buying decision. A while ago, you mentioned different different reasons. Uh, we have the rational and emotional. You mentioned earlier about because it's cheap. That's rational because the price uh, is affordable, and uh, because it has a high quality. Yeah, because I can use it for a long time. Because it's uh, it has a special feature like uh, my my pen has uh, an eraser. So a special feature because it's reliable or because it has a warranty of two years. So I don't get to, to really uh, get worried about if it get, breaks down or something. And the other kind of um, buying decision is the emotional because it looks good because it's, uh, you, do you know those uh, thing like, like my sister, I don't know if she's uh, in, uh, she would buy anything that is purple. Because it's purple, she will buy it. So that's emotional. Uh, like me, uh, I don't really need some pagita or anything. But when somebody, a, a child, a little boy, a little girl would come to me in the parking lot selling some pagita, I would buy. It's not because I need it. It's because I, I pity the the little kids who are working. Sometimes it's the feel. You buy something and it, it, it feels so good, it, it's soft, it's smooth, so you buy it. Or sometimes uh, your uh, favorite Korean actor is using this product, so you just have to have it. Like why do people buy insurance and funeral services? Because they are afraid of what will happen to them if they die. Will they be buried somewhere or because those who they left behind would not have emergency funds for their burial, they might end up buried standing up because there's not enough lot that they can purchase. So people buy products or services based on emotional needs or wants. And then sometimes they justify their purchase logically. The reason why beauty products are still in demand even despite despite the covid lockdown you will still see a lot of people purchasing whitening products something for the pimples and makeup for rational sometimes because the product is so cheap or there is a special feature that you would like you're looking for so you buy it okay sometimes People will buy to satisfy both types of needs. The two types of needs that we're talking about is the need to avoid pain or loss, or we call the stick. And the other need is the need to gain pleasure or the carrot. These are two motivating factors in a person for doing anything in their life, to gain pleasure or 
to avoid pain. You may have heard uh, stated that way the carrot or the stick. The carrot represents the reward while the stick refers to a punishing switch. Your goal in marketing is to find the answer to the prospective customer's problem and to find the pleasure they wish to gain or the pain they wish to avoid. And then show them how your product or service will help them avoid the pain or gain the pleasure they seek. So in order for prospects, prospective customers to find value in what you're attempting to sell them, you have to understand that they have a need with something. So uh, they, will buy, they will buy something because they want something out of it. A while ago, you mentioned because it's cheap, because it has another feature, because it's, it has an outstanding quality. That is their need. Once you understand this, you can show them how your product can solve their problem as they search for the solutions they need. Like, example, I have a pinball, and this causes me some problem. If it doesn't, I don't look for a solution. But if it does, I search probably the internet for pinball solutions. Okay? So let's talk about strategic marketing concept uh, that is very basic for fundamental competitive advantage. And wait, I think it's a little bit so big. You can it's there. To be achieved, uh, for competitive advantage to be achieved, we need to look into the customer, the competitor, and your company's competencies. So three basic, um, basic factors uh, in this, uh, uh, in a market, a strategic map marketing concept. So uh, let's take a look at first the customer. Okay. So there are, according to several studies, there are three basic kinds of prospective customers. The first customer is the one who knows that they have a problem and are eager to find a solution for it. When I mentioned earlier, I, I have a pimple and I wanted the pimple to go out, so I look for a product. And these are those people who actually look at Shopee or Lazada because they know they need something. So I, I want my food to be cooked without oil, so I look for a, an air fryer or something. For some people, they call this the, the low-hanging fruits, no? the, the customers who are just there and need a little marketing, and then uh, you can already uh, get them. Another is uh, the prospect that is somewhat aware that they have a problem. However, they're not quite sure how to go about solving it. This particular type may also be aware or may not also be aware of the consequences of not solving their problem. In other words, it's not a priority for them. Like, for example, um, there is a client or a prospective buyer who knows that she has a problem with bad odor, but is not sure why she should, he or she should solve this problem or how she or, or he can solve the problem. So it's, it's uh, like a little convincing. You need more convincing for this person. Of course, you cannot tell the customer that, oi, you smell awful because the more uh, the customer will not buy the product. Okay? And the last type is um, the prospect or the prospective customer is not aware that they have a problem. Yeah, this is the worst kind. Huh? If they are not aware that they have a problem, then uh, it's very hard to sell them a product. But in these types of cases, according to uh, researchers, you need to handle exactly the same way. You need to use the same process of questioning and probing, regardless of whether the prospect know they have a problem or not. Of course, if you do research, 
there are still a lot of other customers that can be looked into. Marketing involves a lot of research. I know uh, those who are uh, entrepreneurs among you are aware of this, that you really need a lot of research. Okay. Um, companies need to know how and why their potential customers buy. So this means having a good understanding of the customer's buying behavior and their buying decision uh, or the process uh, in buying of each of the potential target. So of course, uh, we need to know who our customers are, who our audience are. We need to define them and deeply research the type of customers uh, and their buying behavior. So let us take a look at the changes in buying behavior since the start of the pandemic. We're featuring here five different cohorts of consumers. Uh, this is from EY Future Consumers Index. That was, um, this is a survey made in 20 countries since the start of pandemic in 2020. Okay. So um, before, before the pandemic, People just, when, when they buy, they look for quality and the latest fact. We know that because there's a lot, there's a lot around. But now, according to this research, affordability is of primary concern. Why? Because a lot of people lost jobs and some instantly became sole breadwinners. Some became so concerned about the next payday. So they really are becoming very practical. So number one is affordability. So that's the first, the first uh, type of cohort. So those people who are looking for affordable products, living within their means and budget, focusing less on brands and more on product functionality. But we're not saying here that those with good brands will not be uh, will not be uh, saleable anymore. We're saying here that there is a big number of people, a big chunk of consumers who are now looking into uh, affordability. The next chunk is on health. People are very health conscious. I never get to drink a lot of vitamins before, but now my pantry is full of vitamins. Because we really need to, to fight this pandemic. Another chunk is uh, people who are trying to minimize their impact on environment and buying brands that reflect their beliefs. No? If you are pro-planet, most likely these people will buy from you. The other one, the other chunk is society first working together for the greater good, buying from organizations they find to be honest and transparent. And even in, in one of the, the training that I'm, I'm attending, I'm attending a training on uh, uh, tourism, tourism mentoring. Uh, the, the focus really is on tourism, um, tourism products that are helping the communities, so society. Yeah. And another chunk is experience, living in the moment to make the most of life. No? So experience the products that offer, products or brand that offers experience. So companies should really make strategic choices uh, when doing this, and even in pricing their products. So we'll talk about pricing later on. But uh, affordability, we mentioned, is of great concern. So if you put your pricing so low, uh, there is also a, uh, a catch no? uh, because people might feel that the quality is also low. Uh, and there is what we call the psycholo psychological pricing or charm pricing that most of the groceries and stores are using that instead of putting... 50 pesos, for example, you will put 49.95. And you will mention in your store that 
in this store, there's nothing more than 50 pesos. And you're right, you're not kidding your customers. 49.95 or 49.99 is definitely lower than 50 pesos. So in this pricing method, retail prices are often expressed in just below number. Numbers that are just a little less than a round number. And a lot of companies are really doing that. So uh, after customers, we look at the company. So if you are representing your company, you have to know your company very well. For those of you who are uh, entrepreneurs who own their company, of course, you know your company very well. For those who are working for a company, it's, it's very important that you know the company very well as well. You have to define or you know by heart the vision and the mission of the company, the location, what the, lo the logo represents, the organization and the, the culture. And finally, the core product and value. What, what is the, the core product and what is the value of this product? A company needs to carefully evaluate both the short and the long-term strategies, the, the short and the long-term strategies to beat competition and have a sustainable competitive advantage. It's very important uh, that you will look at the long-term strategies also as well as the short term. Because sometimes if we look only at the short term strategy, like there are some uh, sellers online who would uh, sell you something and a lot, of, a lot of buyers are buying and there's never a repeat order because the quality is not good or something's, uh, something's wrong with the, with the product as, as you go along. So they are not really concerned with the long-term strategy. They're only uh, looking at a very short, um, a short uh, life of their, of their company. Sometimes people are checking out the companies. If they are not sure about the company's value, most likely they don't buy the product. So it's important really to, to, to be consistent and to know your, your core competencies. You know, what are core competencies? As mentioned here, these are the particular strengths relative to the organization in the industry. Uh, these attributes provide a fundamental basis for the provision of added value. So is there a fit between your company and your product? If I am uh, a, a religious company, for example, and my product is cigarette, so there's no match. So you have really to, to match or to align your company and your product. I know of a small furniture shop who with this uh, pandemic had to close because nobody's buying furniture anymore, but they still have a lot of wood and everything and there is an increase in the demand for for coffin so they ventured into coffin making so if you go to their shop what you will see are coffins you know? but these are they did not change the name of the company it's still a uh, a furniture company so it's it's really um i don't know if it's funny or it's uh, morbid. <laughs> so the feet of the product and the service to the firm's mission and goal is as important as the feet of the product or service to the target market. So we also mentioned here that um, core competency, competency can be the technical or subject know-how, a uh, reliable process, close relationship, with the uh, customers and suppliers, the product development process, and the firm's culture or the employee's dedication. Okay. Now, the third C is the competitor. So we know the competitor. Like companies, 
competing in a related product or market. Companies um, usually are using related technologies. Like, for example, if you're, if you're uh, selling something, um, like you're selling uh, fruit juice, for example, and there is somebody who is uh, selling a beverage. Now, it may not be necessarily a fruit juice, it may be a, a milk tea, but it can be considered as a uh, competitor because uh, they, they uh, answer the same problem of thirst. So another is companies already targeting the firm's prime market segment, even if it's an unrelated product. Like, as mentioned, they were offering fruit juice to high school students. And then there is a noodle shop targeting high school students. They may not have the same, uh, the same uh, product, but they have the same um, market segment. Like, if this uh, noodle shop would offer noodles, and most likely they will be asking for something to drink. So even if they only offer water, most likely uh, your, your fruit juice business will be affected. Another is companies from other geographic, geographical areas with similar product, like there is fruit juice coming from another city or province, and it's also accessible in the market. So that's a competition. And another are new startup companies organized by former employees and our managers of existing companies. I think this is what happened to a factory in Marikina a long time ago. Uh, the company manufactures processed meat, hot dogs, hams, etc. So they have been there for the longest time and most of the people, most of the employees know how to make it. So they know the company secret, they know everything, and then they retire. So when they retired, uh, they don't have anything to do. So most of them invested in meat processing products. So if you will go to the streets of Marikina, they offer ham, they offer uh, hot dogs and all the other uh, uh, meat products uh, that, that the communities are doing. So firms should also know and keep in mind the entrance of new competitors. Um, and it is likely uh, when there are high profit margin in the industry. Like, I remember, I don't know if you have uh, seen this when, uh, I think it was in the 80s, 90s. Uh, some of you are, are still young, uh, 80s and 90s. When... Uh, the people started to make the uh, lechon manok. And everybody is uh, having a lechon manok business because they saw the high profit in the industry and everybody sold lechon manok. And the problem then is, who will you sell it to when all of you are selling the same product? So uh, competitors are likely to enter if there is a high profit margin. Next is unmet product demand. If uh, there is uh, a problem that a lot of people are having, but uh, there are no, no uh, responses to, to, this, uh, to this problem, then new entrants will come in. Uh, like I, I know of this, uh, one of my mentee is a cake, uh, cake maker. She makes really good cakes. Uh, it's, it's customized cakes. So it's really good. But of course now, uh, as we mentioned earlier, people are, are really focusing on necessities. So cake is, only um, purchase during 
occasions. And it's not every day that there's occasion. Of course, there may be birthdays every day, but it's not every day that you can have customers. And she was thinking of uh, summer. So it's summer and I am from region one and we have a lot of beaches here. So she thought of something that she can do. She opened a uh, cake shop with uh, drinks, fruit drinks. And she placed it on a mobile van, mobile van. And she goes around the beaches every day. So it's, it's really, it's a new thing in the market because it's a met. There's a demand for it. People want to go out. People want to take a, a, summer, a summer dip and have something to drink. So she met that demand. So if, if nobody else is meeting that demand, grab it. If there are no major barriers to market entry, if the market is open, then there will be really new uh, competitors. If future growth, if there is a future growth potential for, for anything, for anything that uh, is economical, uh, and the competitive rivalry is not really intense. So we, look for a market that is not really saturated. And if the market is already saturated, it's, uh, it's like signaling you to, to move a little bit higher, you know, go up another notch in your, in your uh, product. Like uh, one of my mentees was asking me, what, what will I do if, if my business is Lichong Mano? But if everyone is selling the manok, then probably you can sell something to, to pair or to supplement the manok. If, if everybody is offering there and then they have the tables, why not sell vegetables or why not sell something that is not the manok? Okay. So... The, the three C's of marketing strategy is clear in one thing. If you don't capture the audience, someone else will. So look at your audience and dig deeper into what they need or want. And probably this is what you, what you really can offer to them. Also pay equal attention to the others your competitors, your company, because the three of them has to be balanced. It's not only the customers, but the three of them. Okay. So being aware of the three Cs, we can now start thinking about developing a market marketing strategy. It encompasses the three major decisions. First decision, select a target market. We've been talking about that already, so we've been saturating it. So a target market is a specific group of people you have decided to target with your products or services. So earlier, if you did the uh, audience or customer analysis, you have a fair idea of who this market is. And then, sorry, determine the way the firm wants to position its product or service in the mind of the target customer. Are you going to be a luxury product, a high quality product, or a divisoria type product where you can buy it at the cheapest possible, uh, cheapest possible uh, rate? Yeah, so I, I will just be talking about four, four types of uh, products here or market. Uh, so you could be a mass market, like I mentioned about the Divisoria type, and it is made up of product with mass appeal. It doesn't really need or require a good brand, like a face mask. Everybody wears a face mask, so nobody really looks into to the brand. Or if you're very meticulous, probably you will look at the brand. But for the, the general public, uh, people don't really look at the brand, they just 
need something to cover their face. <clears throat> Another is the niche marketing where you focus on a specialized market, uh, like for example, clothes shop that offer only plus sizes, restaurants for vegetarians or vegans, uh, restaurants that allow dog, or dog owners to eat with their, with their owners, uh, the, with their pets, and maybe center for gamers, a virtual office, uh, uh, and uh, along those types. There is also the B2C or the business to consumer that involves selling goods directly to the consumers. And the B2B uh, or the business to business involves the sale of one's company's goods and services to another company. Companies can both uh, can do both. You know? Like uh, I remember those trucks that deliver breads to grocery, like uh, Gardenia, for example. Uh, they would deliver this, and these are basically the B two B. But my husband would buy a loaf or two from the delivery guy, so they could also do B two C. Okay. So number three here is defining the market. So in defining the market, in defining the market, um, we have to know the marketing mix. Um, decision, one of the major decision in the marketing strategy is defining the marketing mix. And you have mentioned it earlier, the four P's of marketing. And what are the four P's of marketing? Is that please, 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 when you are selling something, please buy my product. The uh, marketing mix is a set of marketing tools that the business uses to sell products or services to its customers. Of course, sometimes if uh, these are our friend and they tell us, please, we buy, but it will not work all the time but it's important to use the four p's of marketing or the marketing mix uh, in uh, looking at our or preparing our market strategy so this is a 1960s concept but still um, there are still a lot of writers who are telling that they are representing, the four Ps are representing the key things that customers need to understand about any product or service to make purchase decision. So they can be presented to customers in various ways, but these important fundamentals never change and entrepreneurs must never lose sight of them. If you open the internet, you will see seven Ps, eight Ps, and so many other Ps and even Cs but we still focus until now on the four Ps. So what can be different is not that four Ps is uh, that few people will believe in your message or even take notice of them unless you grab and keep their attention. So uh, there are slightly uh, some changes you know, in, in the four Ps uh, because of how we, sell things this this era okay so as mentioned uh four piece composed of product place promotion price and we we combine all of them in our uh to reach our target market so let's start with the product so in identifying uh the product for those who have business, um, may I ask anybody uh, what your product is? Anybody who has a, a product here can please share what their product is. Cutty corn? Is your product a corn or a cut? <laughs> Hi, so we sell back products. Our anchor product is shampoo bars. Shampoo bars. Oh, why catty corn? Because I rescue cats and I love catty corn. I mean, I love unicorns. Oh, thank you. So the product of catty corn is shampoo bars. 
So these are like soap, but they are used as shampoo, right? Exactly. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy Corn. So um, we mentioned when we mentioned product, as mentioned earlier, uh, we can also include service. Now, for Kathy Corn, the product is the soap. Uh, and because they have studied their target audience, it's most likely that uh, the reason why they made such a product is because there is a demand for it. Uh, people are looking for something very portable, something they can just shoot in their bag, uh, but still keep their hair uh, smelling good and uh, shiny. Yeah. So uh, during their product development, um, there really is an extensive research on, on the product. So most of, uh, not most, all of our entrepreneurs would do that. So product is something you sell. What do you sell? It could be a physical good, services. Me, I, what I sell is consulting. So uh, it's, it's a service. So uh, as mentioned, uh, marketers should also consider the life cycle of the product to address any challenges that may arise once it's in the hands of the consumer. Like just um, in, in I, I read in the internet that the earliest version of iPod, iPod, not iPad, iPod, has a battery life problem. And that was only noticeable after a certain amount of time. And Apple needed to develop ways to combat that problem, but they have to retrieve the products. And it's, it's really embarrassing if you do that. So in discussing your product, you need to describe the benefits. What will be the benefits of your products? Uh, how is it used, the technology that you do to, uh, that you need to do it or to, to process it? You need to clearly articulate what you do uh, offer and what you don't offer. If it's not clear, then you may fall victim to scope creep where customers, partners, and even the members of the company will keep expanding the scope of what you originally envisioned. Like, oh, I, I'm going to have a school, a nursery school. And then it became uh, a school, a nursery school with specializing in ballet or something. And then eventually it became something else. It's because there is really, uh, no clarity as to what you really want to achieve. So really look into the, the objective of your company and your product. And as mentioned, please look at the benefits of your product. Sellers who focus on the specific product rather than the benefit provided suffer from what is called the marketing myopia. Not just looking at the product, but people are looking for benefits of the product, okay? Or later we will do a little exercise. So we have to consider in our product what the product is for, what the customer wants from, uh, from it, uh, like the, the shampoo bar, uh, what does the customer want from it? Durability probably and uh, portability. What features does it, does it have to meet these needs? If, if the, the need is for, for uh, a shampoo that will make your hair shine and uh, uh, it's, it's easy to, to handle. So does it meet uh, those needs? How and where will the customer use it? So there, is, there should always be, especially for new products, there should always be a uh, procedure on how, how to use it. Like uh, if, if we have a new phone, most likely it comes with a literature on how to open it, how to close, how to change. Because if it's a new product, then uh, you, cannot, uh, you cannot just uh, search on the internet on how to use it. And it's, it's better if it's already um, uh, attach 
uh, supplemented by a uh, literature. And of course, the product name is very important. But before we go to the product name, let's just differentiate a product and a brand, okay? So a product is what you sell. A brand is the perceived image of your product. And branding is a strategy to give that image. So a brand is a name, term, design, symbol, or any feature. Like this, uh, this product is called uh, a bottle of water. And it is, there is a brand. For example, uh, the brand of this uh, bottled water is, I cannot read it, but for example, it's Alos Tears. Yeah, it, it may be uh, the brand name. So it's important also to check whether your product name sounds good or compatible with the value you want to offer or it doesn't offend anybody. Uh, I have here some, some products uh, that I cut out from the internet. And this is what we call brand jacking. A lot of Filipino products are like this. They are getting the, the big names and are uh, using them as a sales or a marketing strategy, but they call it the brand jacking because they're, you're hijacking. Uh, another brand. But you know, Filipinos are, are very, very good in uh, coining names. I have a lot here, uh, but I, I mentioned earlier, make it sure that it sounds good. Like, will you drink a hot drink named urinal? Of course, uh, rose with any other name smells the same, but it's, it's very hard to drink if you're drinking a urinal or drink a pea cola or a tooth, toothpaste that is called retardex or eat chips that is called only puke. Grabe! <laughs> <laughs> Inisip ba nila yan bago nila ginawag? <laughs> Kaya they, they should, uh, we should really look into this, no? Pag but this is the name, and, and these are important. Uh, I have some local products, yeah. These ones are also brand jacking. Some of these are brand jacking, like McKenny Rogers, uh, Cebo Pacific. They're hilarious, they're, they're funny, but uh, some are using uh, the names of uh, existing brands. But I, I like the Cebu Pacific, Living Things, which is a funeral parlor, Hari Pata, Tililing, Sumacom Laundry, Let's Talk Dirty about the laundry, and Starbucks. Uh, there's another one that I got, but um, I hope some of you will not be offended because some are, are offensive. So I'm not going to read them anymore. I'd just like to, to share. Uh, some of this, most of this are tea. Okay. Okay. So that's the product. Then the price. Price always shape the perception of your product. As I mentioned earlier, if, uh, if a company is new to the market and has not named, made the name for themselves, it's unlikely that your target market will be willing to, to pay a high price. On the other hand, a low price usually would, would usually infer or usually suggest an inferior product in the customer's eyes as they compare your product to a competitor. Probably the best way to start is simply responding to these questions like, how much did it cost to produce the product? What is the customer's perceived value? Like, if I will ask you to, uh, how much will a pen cost? And you will say uh, like 20 pesos. And if I'm going to offer a pen and I will offer it at 50 pesos for the initial price, then it's going to be expensive on the point of view of a regular customer. 
So we really need to ask our customers their perceived value. Will a slight pricing, uh, price decrease uh, significantly increase your market share? So if this one costs 20 pesos from your competitor, and if I sell it at 15 pesos, will I increase my market share? Or it, if it's because uh, your competitor's product is more prestigious or your competitor is, is a high-end uh, and high-quality store, then no matter if uh, I sell it even for 10 pesos, it might not increase my market share. Or can the current price keep up with the price of the product's competitor? Can you offer uh, a price that will uh, really match uh, your, your competitor's product price? So we will be dealing more on this later. So place. This should explain your distribution model. Where do buyers look? for your product or service. If they look in a store, what kind of store will this be? Is this online? Where is the store located? Or is there a catalog where they can order? Or only during trade fairs? Or is it different from what your competitors are doing or you're just following your neighbors? And then I'm, I'm not really going to Nitty gritty because uh, I, I assume that you are already very much aware because uh, of the result of the uh, survey a, wh a while ago. And next is promotion. This describes your marketing strategy and is mainly influencing brand recognition and sale. There are multiple ways to promote a product and the best strategy includes a little bit of, of all of this. Uh, like advertising, direct marketing, sales promotion, TV commercial, social media ads, catalogs, trade fairs, billboards, and even an ad and on top of taxis uh, or, uh, or uh, the side of the jeepney are all types of promotion. And even, even word of mouth is uh, also a type of uh, promotion. It's an informal communication about the benefits of the products by satisfied and ordinary individuals. Let's, let's take a look. Do you, do you notice or do you uh, see any product that, uh, or any of this advertisement that are familiar to you? Would you know uh, any of this? Like this guy in the... Uh, Marlboro the, yan. Yan ba yun? Yan, yan, yan. That's why I asked, no? Kasi everybody would think it's Marlboro. Ay, hindi. Oh, no. Wale. <laughs> actually, yeah. Actually, when I saw it, I thought it's Marlboro. But I was thinking, akala ko ba hindi na pwedeng mag-advertise ang mga cigarette company? You know what it did? It's a chupa chups commercial. Ano, pop, yeah. <laughs> Pambihira, chupa chups. Ano ba yan? <laughs> <laughs> chupa chups, yeah. And then the one below, uh, this is the favorite of uh, a lot of my engineers. The the Jollibee commercial, okay. the Jollibee telenovela. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they love it. So uh, this, this type of commercial, as you can see, is uh, a hit a lot of people. Okay, so we have the four uh, and I just like to, to give you some four guide questions in, in the promotion, in the promoting of the product. Where and when can you get your audience to see your messaging? San Bayan, TV or radio show, Facebook, billboards, what is the best time and channel to promote through uh, yung best time? Like if you're targeting a, a senior citizen, the best time would most likely be morning, pre, during, and after the daily mass or afternoon soap opera and the news. 
What kind of promotional message will resonate to your audience? Still, if you're considering the, the seniors, the message uh, of one of the milk product for seniors forever young would be very, very, uh, it, would, it would really come uh, across your, your um, target market. How your competitors promote and what you have learned from them. Always listen to, to your competitors. What do they learn? Uh, what, do, what are they doing? Can I also do that or do I have to be different? Hey, so this time I would like everyone if you have a uh, paper and pen, we're going to do an activity. Paper and pen, please. Yeah, okay. We're going to do an activity and I call this how to make a cup of coffee for your special someone. Okay. The procedure is, or the mechanic is, mechanics are, first, you will make a cup of coffee by drawing the steps to make a cup of coffee. Drawing only, no words. Uh, drawing and then arrow. And it is for your special someone. If it's a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a husband, a spouse or whatever, it is for special someone, not for you, okay? So uh, whatever the ingredients will be dependent on the special someone, okay? Start now and then later, I will ask everybody to show their uh, process of coffee, coffee making. Just a cup, okay? A cup of coffee. The process involved in making a cup of coffee. Janet, how uh, do I still have enough time? I think you only have 10 minutes. 10 left. minutes, okay. Yeah. May I suggest everyone to do this? This is a fun exercise. You don't have to make a very, very good drawing. A stick, stick people or stick uh, coffee will do. Yeah, okay. So may I suggest everyone to, may I ask, request everyone to open their videos and show everyone their drawings. Just post. Angie, can you make it a little bit uh, closer? Oh, I can see a cup. Okay. Uh, Cheryl? I cannot see a uh, boundless possibility. Um, I, I can't seem to see the drawing, ma'am. It's like, uh, hindi yata inaalaw nung ating, ayan, wow, yan, yan. Raya, yes. Uh, Geneva, yes, okay. Uh, Cheryl, I cannot see your drawing. Uh, shine and sparkle, okay. Uh, Elaine, I cannot see. It's like the the background is eating it. So I cannot see Elaine. Yeah, Edna. Ooh, nice. None. Some of you are uh, draws very well. Oh, uh, okay. Cheryl, I cannot see. Okay. Chinagaw yan, mamalo. Chinagaw. Chinaga. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Lainy. Mokapat. Lainy, lapit konti. Uh, yeah. 
Okay. Sige. Maraming salamat. Diba it's, it's nice, no? Bakit, bakit natin pinagawa yung ano? Sabi natin, uh, look into, uh, check into the the loved ones. Sino ba yung loved ones na pinagawa nyo ng kape? Ah, talaga si Kati, loved one talaga kasi meron pa siyang part doon sa kanyang coffee. <laughs> yeah, oh, si Steph, wow, yeah, one, two, three, four, ganun siya talaga ka, ka proseso. Okay, boundless possibility, nakita ko, yes, very nice. Yeah, okay. So, we see that we know our customer very well. Yeah. Thank you very much. Pwede na po natin ibaba. Yeah. We know our customer very well. That is why we know the flavor of the coffee they want. If they want um, what they call that instant coffee, if they want brewed coffee, or if they want a different kind of coffee, that's what you make. Huh? So, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. So, the, the the loved one is our customer. So we know our customer. We know what they want. And the coffee is our product. So there are different ways of making the product. That's our product, different ways. We, are, we have the same product, but there are different ways of making the product as, as can be seen in your drawings. And we can see that we can use these ways of making the product into our USP or our unique selling proposition. Like, oh, I make this product out of uh, roasting rice oh, because we want it to be authentic, natural. We roasted the rice and made this and found this and made into coffee. So that may be your unique selling proposition. Or... Uh, we make this product uh, by, by really heating a very, very high degree of heat for the water before we put the coffee. So there is a difference, uh, a, different, uh, a different way of uh, doing the product. So uh, the cup of coffee, as mentioned, is the product for your specific customer. The processes involved vary depending on your company policy or the values or the mission and vision and your USP. Uh, as I mentioned, you can use it for your USP. We can, we can go to a laborious process of making our fresh brood of coffee to give you a different or one of a kind coffee experience. So that can be your USP. Okay, now let's go to the price. How do you make the price? In each of the process that you have made, try to put a price on it. Like for example, you boil the water. So how much is a cup of water? Say, don't tell me that it's free because there's nothing free nowadays. Even a cup of water costs something. For example, you bought a cup of a, a, a big, uh, water costs 50 pesos, for example. So one cup is like what? Uh, 50 centavos or 25 centavos. You put a price on that. And then uh, how much does boiling the water cost? It entails fuel. So there must be a cost. In your, like Kathy has made a heart. In doing that, it's very hard. It, it requires a skill. So how much will you pay yourself for doing that hard in the coffee? So everything should have a price for you to be coming out with how much your product will be. So hindi yung, ay sige, ano na lang, 25 pesos na lang yung kape ko. Bakit? There should be a reason why you have reached that price. It's because in the process, there are several uh, costs that you should uh, really look into. Okay, so that is the price. And the place, where will you sell your coffee? Will you sell it hot or cold? Uh, will you sell it in a store, in a uh, mobile store, in a kiosk, or 
will you deliver online? If you deliver online, will the hot coffee be still hot? Or will the iced coffee still be iced when you deliver? So there are some things that you should consider in uh, the place or putting out. No? Uh, if it's a store, uh, do you have the you have to add it to, to the price uh, that you have um, computed earlier? Because uh, of course the, the shop, even if you have your own edifice or building, there's a maintenance to it. So there's an added cost. And then the promotion, how do you inform your client that coffee is ready to be served? How do you promote? Like, do you, do you chat? Do you PM? Do you text? Do you deliver the coffee to, to the bed? So this is the, the promotion. How do we tell them that the product is ready? So that's, that's the simplest way I can think of, of uh, explaining the four Ps. Okay. Okay, so earlier we have uh, discussed the three Cs and the four Cs and just, in, uh, just the four Ps immediately after it. So the four Ps are the marketing mix variables under your control. You control your, you can control your product, your price, your promotion, and your place. But the three Cs, except for the company, <clears throat> if you own the company, the three Cs are, except for the company, are uh, semi-fixed environmental factors in your market, uh, which you have more or less a hand. But of course, in the company, uh, you, you don't, uh, you, if you own it, you have a hand in it. But your customers and your competitors uh, are, are really um, varied. So you really cannot control them and you have to consider them very well. But all of this taken together must be um, considered in uh, coming up with your product. Okay, just uh, a run through of uh, digital marketing. I'm not going to talk about that, but here digital marketing of course, is any form of marketing products or services that involves electronic devices. And uh, I would wanted to ask you to, to vote, but there's no time. So I will just like to discuss this, that uh, in a recent survey, um, they asked how significant do you think the COVID-19 disruption will be to your usual branding or marketing effort in the long term? Uh, according to the, the survey conducted uh, in 2020, uh, the COVID-19 disruption will have a lasting impact, but won't be transformative. And uh, some say that it's short-term, permanently changed branding, and unsure. But of course, the bigger chunk is that it will have a lasting impact, okay? So um, we have mentioned digital marketing because since we started, we started the, uh, since last year, 2020, when the COVID-19 disruption started, people have really uh, opened their laptops, their PCs, because this is our new normal in, uh, in communicating with other people. So it's uh, very important that we consider digital marketing and social media marketing, which is very useful nowadays, okay? So we have uh, various um, uh, social media that you can use. And as of this date, Facebook is still uh, the highest. Uh, with uh, 1.79 billion daily active users. Of course, uh, it's good for B2C crowd, uh, business to, uh, to uh, consumers, and it's good for brand awareness and advertising. 
Twitter has 186 million uh, daily active users, both for B2B and B2C, good for public relations and customer relation. Instagram has 1 billion monthly active users, B2C, uh, and uh, because it's uh, more on pictures, behind the scene, and uh, there are a lot of user-generated content in advertising. LinkedIn is, uh, has two, 675 million monthly active users. And uh, this is uh, where uh, different generations really meet, baby boomers, Gen X, and millennials. Um, and it is usually B2B. We get a lot of uh, contacts and links. Uh, through LinkedIn. YouTube, of course, over 2 billion login monthly users and brand awareness, entertainment, and how-to videos are, are really the priorities here. Pinterest, 416 million monthly and visual advertising inspiration. Yeah, this is where I get inspiration when I'm looking for something. And Snapchat, uh, 249 million users, and these are more on brand awareness advertising. Okay. Oh, so what are the benefits of social media? So it increases brand awareness, of course, uh, generates leads and boosts conversion, foster relationship with customers, and learn from competitors. So uh, in social media, there are a lot a lot of competitors, but it fosters relationship with our customers because you're always there. They always see you every time they open it. So you really get to know that the customers get to know you a lot and you see other, uh, other uh, competitors who are there. So more or less you learn from their, their good things or their uh, mistakes. Okay, so just to end it up, I, I found uh, 10 truths about marketing after the pandemic, uh, but I only uh, focus here five because it's, uh, we're going to, uh, have, uh, we won't have enough time to, to really look at the 10. Okay, so the first uh, truth that they mentioned, I'll just focus on the new truth, is that customer expect you to have exactly what they want. So previously, um, customers are concerned with uh, hoping that you know what they want. But now, uh, with the uh, with the data that are available uh, online, customers really expect that you exactly know what they want. And if uh, they they uh, you offer something that is not uh, within their their taste. Uh, they seem to be turned off. So because of this, um, it is suggested that you look into the content of, of the, the, the materials that you're providing, the commerce or the, the experience, the community where you put all of this, um, this ads or promotion and the convenience, like, like offering uh, consumer coupons or benefits. As always, do not treat the audience with a one size fits all. So that, that truth is still there. The next one is that you're competing not with your competitors, but with the last best, uh, best last experience that uh, the customers have. So in this age of digital transformation, the customer expects so much more than just digital transactions, simple <laughs> transaction. Uh, the, uh, according to studies, companies should follow uh, three strategies like using the real-time digital analytics, building the right data and technology foundation, know your, the personalized journey of your customers and align individuals and individual and collective goals, the company goals. Next is uh, relationships are everything and marketing is often just the beginning of a relationship with the customer, and it must be viewed in the context of the full end-to-end -end journey. Another is, uh, according to Harvard Business Review, COVID-19 has created an irreversible trend for marketing to embrace a quick-witted uh, approach. 
the outcome of this crisis created a market agility mindset that we have to listen and uh, demand sensing, not only for the benefit of marketing, but for the full company to capture the, the, the real essence of consumer sentiment. And the other one is that the pandemic truly challenged brand loyalty. Because as we mentioned earlier, sometimes with the, with the necessity, we don't really look for brands. But uh, now brands should really focus on the values they express. While quality, convenience, and price still very much matter to consumers, Factors such as sustainability, trust, ethical sourcing, and social responsibility are increasingly becoming important to uh, consumers uh, when they are choosing their brand. The truth is, uh, uh, it shows that the need um, to achieve balance between humans and automation of enhancing the craft of storytelling. Sometimes people really want the story uh, to drive human connection and create better analytics and deployment. So just one fundamental reality stand, the need to prioritize our customers' viewpoint. So that is just really uh, the focus of just emphasizing the need to listen to your customers. There are some companies that turn their adversities into opportunities because they have seen the need of their consumers, such as this uh, local liquor company who shifted to producing alcohol uh, in 2020 at the start of the pandemic because they, they know that people need rubbing alcohol than uh, liquor. Rolls-Royce and Ford switched to producing ventilators. And this is one of the truths that um, when we truly intend to address the needs of our customers, we redefine a company and deliver what they need. So as an end, let me just give you the top trending, the top marketing trends for 2021. First is, of course, there will be a continuing digital transformation. Next is, People will like to get out of their homes as I would. I uh, would like to get out because I've been on Zoom every, every day of my life. So I would like to see advertisement, out of home advertisements like billboards. Growing focus on meaning and purpose of products. More social selling. Influencer marketing will get even bigger. So nowadays, there are a lot of influencers. So if you're really into, into a lot of social media presence, uh, your, your influence is, uh, is requested by, by a lot of companies. More focus on Instagram reels or videos. Short videos are remaining popular. And did you know that um, TikTok has a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of audience, and it is really generating a lot of sales. Okay, so that's my, uh, that's my uh, piece. And if you have questions, I was really in a hurry because I, I saw the time. I don't want to eat up the time for Tal. Yeah. So if you have any questions, uh, please. Uh, just raise your hand or you. just open your microphone. Thank you. Okay, thank you po, Doc Alo. Thank you so much for that uh, great lecture. No, dami ko natutunan. <laughs> okay, so um, we really, uh, in the interest of time, perhaps you can entertain one question, one or two, um, for those who would like uh, have burning questions talaga and but will not be called to ask a question you can chat it and uh, you can type it in our chat box but for now siguro we can take in um perhaps just one or two qu pressing questions anyone from the group going once Going twice. Kung nahihiya naman, pwede naman pong i-chat. Then si Doc Alo can reply to your question through our chat box. Alright. So going once, going twice. Ah, okay. Meron po tayo ng raise hand. 
Ma'am Jo, kayo po ba? Yes, uh, I want to ask uh, Ma'am because our business is quite different. We're into social entrepreneurship. So we want to focus on uh, high pricing uh, with the concept of you know giving giving to the sector to the PWD sector so what do you recommend as our marketing strategy uh, what is your product now we have uh baking bake uh, bake yummies we sell cookies and other pastries and we have a printing service where we print mugs and t-shirts and echo bag the artworks of our children uh, gets to this we get to print this in on this merchandise okay so um right now what what uh, what marketing strategy are you using uh we sell to relatives and friends <laughs> for a start and we also do facebook but we have not generated much sales on facebook yeah. Uh, primarily because uh, we are in the we are in the older generation, we are not really uh, tech savvy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what what is your target market? Oh, we like to target everyone because we like to give work to our children. So, okay. uh, as uh, of course, we like to target those who will do those who are sympathetic to our cause. Yeah. Okay. I, I suggest you target those who have money <laughs> and you mentioned <laughs> sympathetic to your cause. Because if we if we do an all out target and uh, like we use Facebook, but if our if our market is not really on Facebook, um, then we are uh, trying to extend our energy or our uh, so much, no. So what? Why? Uh, why don't we focus on that specific market? Like uh, uh, for those who are focusing on, uh, for those who are willing to give, uh, you know, we can find this. Uh, probably there is also a, a, a Facebook uh, market for this, but it may be another another sort because. You know, you, you mentioned that uh, we are already on the older older population, uh, but I still use Facebook, and I think you, Mom Jo, are using Facebook also. We there are also we can also tap. Uh, I think the younger ones are more into Instagram, <laughs> but as uh, we are more into Facebook, we can use that. But I think the, the messaging, the, the focus will be on the messaging on how we can help the children uh, develop more, more emotional messaging because when, when it comes to this kind, it will be more on the emotional messaging because if it's a rational messaging, then really nobody will, will or, or very few will, uh, will buy the products. But if it's more of the emotional messaging, that, like I mentioned earlier, whenever I go out and I see kids selling, I will buy. It's because I pity the kids. And that is where we get the hook. We put the hook. Hook people who are really uh, um, into to giving for kids uh, to, to go into that. Yes. Thank you, you Ms. Yes. Joa. Thank you, Ma'am Jo. Thank you, Doc Alo, for that. No, yung emotional buying yun yung i-target natin. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank um, you. Uh, thank you po, but we are running out of time. We have another question po in the chat box. Doc Alo, perhaps uh, you may just want to uh, uh, say your reply na lang po through text. I'll, no? I'll answer him. Po. I'll answer na lang, Ms. Benay. Ah, po, sa, sa, sa chat box na lang yeah. po. Okay po. Thank you, Doc Alo. Um, we now move on to our next speaker and she will discuss about the, on the topic on Meet where your customers are. I'd like to call on Mina to introduce our next speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. So, si Tal is the founder and designer of Risky Designs, a footwear brand and manufacturing company that focuses on Filipino materials, skills, and inspirations. She works with weavers from Buhi Kamsur, Valladolid Negros Occidental, and Quezon, Isabel, 
Quezon and Quezon Isabella to complement her shoe designs that are handmade by her team of shoemakers in Marikina. She is also the co-founder of Stride Collective, a community of more than 25 shoepreneurs that have their shoe brands manufactured by Risky, among other shoe brands that, ma- that they make for and aims to collaborate rather than compete. Tal is an advocate of local crafts and promotes ethical manufacturing and sourcing practices and strives to communicate this through her course of work and teaching. She's also, uh, she also conducts regular trainings um, with artisan communities and teaches in various studios and schools, such as the College of St. Benil. She also completed her master's in entrepreneurship with social enterprise development as her track in Ateneo Graduate School of Business. Please welcome uh, my good friend, Tal de Guzman. Hi, Mina. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Um, I hope nag-enjoy po kayo sa inyong um, discussion with Ms. Alo. So, as Ms. Mina said, I'm a social entrepreneur. Uh, so, I'll share a bit. So, this is more, um, a bit more practical, I would say, that my, my sharing. So, I'll share my screen. Uh, so today we'll be discussing po a little bit more about sustaining um, businesses through the pandemic. So a bit more on the socially conscious side. So hindi naman po kailangan na kayo ay social entrepreneur. It could be also that you have a social cause. So siguro ba kayo have a, um, you're supporting your people, you're supporting, um, your, you have causes for, for the planet and everything. So um, hindi naman strict for that. So at least you have this certain um, cause that you have for your business. Okay, so um, I'm Tal de Guzman. I'm a shoepreneur, um, shoe entrepreneur po, so I call myself a shoepreneur, and a storyteller. So that's what I'll be doing right now. I'll be telling you some stories and also some observations regarding um, businesses like myself and um, similar ones that are um, pare-pares naman po tayo, especially if you have businesses, you're going through the same um, struggles. But I hope I'll be able to share a bit about um, what we have done and what other businesses have done to um, cope with the pandemic. So, oops, so, so to help you understand what I do, so my business is Risque Designs. We uh, um, may tatlo po siyang different segments. So we have the retail part. So nagbebenta kami ng um, finished goods and made to order. And then I have the manufacturing side, which means we are manufacturing for different shoe brands. And then I have Workshops by Tal, which is training for shoe entrepreneurs, for designers, for the artists and community. So we break it down to this. Um, and then um, another business that I have is called Stride Collective. So Stride po is the community or the group of shoe entrepreneurs that we are working with. So um, we have this uh, ideology that we collaborate rather than compete. So kung, parang di ba hindi siya common within shoe parang industries na parang you're co- te- technically competitors but you are supporting each other. So that's our whole thing about Stride Collective. Um, so we are working with different communities such as weavers, wood carvers, and shoemakers. So for shoemakers, it's Marikina. For the wood carving, it's Paete Laguna. For weaving, we have Camsor, Negros Occidental, and Isabella. Um, so ito na. So pre-pandemic, we were doing pretty well. We, we just um, we opened our store for Stride Collective in 2019. Um, I was doing international shows for both Stride and Risque. Um, we were pretty much um, okay. We we're sustainable even though we are a social enterprise, which is very difficult to achieve. We, are, we were very sustainable as a business. Um, we were able to provide trainings for our team. We are able to provide trainings for communities, even take our team on like vacation to the beach, stuff like that. Um, but of course, as we know, um, last year, uh, we went through ECQ in March. So we had to shut down the business um, at least for a month. Um, nung, nung talagang ECQ, ECQ. So we were wondering, parang, ano ba gawin natin? Kasi we, are, we were considered not as non-essential. Eh. Sapatos kami. We're producing, we're manufacturing for shoes. Um, but eventually, we pivoted a little bit. We had an initial pivot. Um, we had... We had some um, advocates. We had, I had one advocate who was asking if we can do, if we can cut, simple lang, cut, cutting of um, foam for shields, for face shields at that time. And then there were, we had some clients who were asking if we can make masks for them, basic lang. So we did. 
um, at least it provided some income for our team at that time. We were also doing some PPEs. Um, I accept, we accepted work um, for uh, from other social entrepreneurs as well. So everyone was really looking to, to support the frontliners at that time. And then um, we, so we had a lot of weaves, the, the hinabi na textile. So eventually we turned that into masks. This one was very, talagang, this, this sold out really well at that time. So every time we posted it, it sold fast. But of course, right now, there's a lot of people that are selling um, masks even made of local weaves. So we, um, we went back eventually to our main product, which is, which is shoes. But um, I'll tell you more a little bit about that later. And we had another challenge that came our way. So, of course, after the ECQ, um, GCQ, we were gearing up a little bit in the business. And then came Typhoon Ulysses. So I, I hope um, you are aware um, of Typhoon Ulysses and what happened and how it um, affected Marikina in particular. So these pictures that you see are actually pictures from my own team. So um, the left one, yung house yan of our one of our shoemakers, talagang second floor, covered until the second floor. They had to go to the roof or go to the um, to the kapit bahay. And then the ones on the right na photos are pictures of the aftermath. Um, talagang they had to be cleaning parent the mud and everything um, even weeks after the typhoon itself. But um, we were very lucky because of the community that we have built around Stride. So Stride um, launched a fundraising campaign. And we were very fortunate that not just Stride, but so many people came together and helped us raise funding in both in kind and in cash. We, we were able to, um, like in a week, a week and a half, we were able to mobilize immediately. And we had we knew nothing about fundraising, about doing a relief drive. Um, so, makita nyo po dito yung office po namin yan. So, our shoemaking facility was converted into a um, repacking station. And we were overspilling with donations that even the outside of the office um, were filled with donations. So, in just a matter of more than a month, but we were mobilizing within a week. We raised over 650,000 in cash and in kind. And we were able to send relief for about 700 shoe and bag making families. So by families, meaning, kung may kita nyo po, si Kuya here smiling, that's what each person got. So it's two bags of really full, uh, filled na, na, na goods. And then we were able to provide hot meals also for uh, more than 400 um, families, uh, care of sponsors as well. So this one, talagang, we were able to uh, maximize the, the support of the community and everything really um, went back to our um, beneficiaries. And more than that, because initially, we were afraid. We didn't know if we were going to even for about 50 families. And then we ended up raising for, almost, for around 700 families. So for now, I'll be discussing a bit more um, about um, this journey, you know. Um, so I'll be sharing not just about Risque and Stride, but also about other businesses. So first, we'll discuss about what changed during this pandemic and then how brands survive. So let's go first to what changed. So what changed po is um, there are three aspects, you know, the, why they buy, how they buy, and how much they can spend. And um, so for why they buy, so una-una with this whole um, parang earth-shattering, um, life-changing thing that's happening to all of us, people are re-evaluating their choices. And along with this um, parang pag -re evaluate came some come some keywords like sustainability, slow movement, uh, mindfulness, kumbaga, um, a bit more thinking about the way they're living their lives right now. So one of the things that um, changed also is mobility. So for mobility, ito po yung um, transporting from one place to another. So dati, it was more parang car-centric, di ba po? Karamihan, everyone is um, traveling by car, may nagko-commute, but um, mostly by, by vehicles. 
Um, because of the pandemic, dahil nga baw, for a time, bawal um, dumabas, bawal um, a lot of transportation. A lot of people went into uh, biking, went into um, scooters, motorcycle. So there were brands that um, adapted to that. So for example, here we have Gouache. So Gouache is actually a camera, camera bag company. But because of this new demand, they released bags for, um, for motorcycles and bicycles. Nifty um, just used to produce bikes lang, mostly for, for hobbyists before. But now people were not just biking for, um, for um, exercise. They were biking really to, to do normal things like doing their groceries. So they came up with other products like baskets um, to complement the, um, the bikes. And um, yun, yeah, like what I said, the, a lot of people are now working from home and they, were, they have this um, rethinking of mindful living, about um, wellness, pag-aalaga sa sarili, um, regardless if it's mind, emotions, or um, actual health, the physical, the body. Um, and uh, part of this po, um, siguro kilala nyo ito, ang mga plantito at plantita na napaka sumikat, di ba? Dumami ang mga plantito at plantita right now. And of course, syempre, there are businesses that um, kumbaga nag-jump in dito sa trend na ito. So not just selling plants, but also um, changing, uh, pivoting a little bit and um, making their products more relevant to the consumer. So for example, dito po sa pinaka-right, um, we have Zara Juan. So Zara Juan is a is a, a more high-end um, bag company that also uses local materials, local designs. So nag sila ng planters, but still keeping in uh, keeping true with their um, core, locally made, made of uh, local materials, has um, designs na local pa rin. Um, but it's a different product and it um, latches on to this um, plantito plantita craze. Next is loungewear. So loungewear, ito po yung inyong mga pambahay na medyo social. Hindi lang your normal duster, but something that is more um, relaxed, medyo posh, pwedeng pang Instagram, yung mga ganyan. Um, so some of these brands, like Rags to Riches. Rags to Riches is a, mostly a bag and accessories company, also a social enterprise. Um, pero they released parang loungewear, mga pwede sa house, um, robes, um, son metis, did mas parang chic na pambahay. And then kami po, even with us sa Risky, we were, um, kasi nga yung mga tao, they didn't wanna buy shoes. Kasi saan naman sila pupunta, di ba? <laughs> You're not allowed to go out. So we decided to come up um, using, again, our local weaves. We came up with mga cute mga cute na slippers and sandals and parang slides um, na pwede for the house but will still be chic. Um, so yun, medyo um, this one moved a lot and is still moving for us. And then, of course, because we're spending so much more time at home, a lot of people are working from home. Um, Nagpo-focus right now yung mga tao with their houses. So parang their ambience, um, the way they are um, designing the home, yung mga gamit nila sa bahay. So a lot of companies like furniture companies or home accessories companies, um, they're marketing their products so much more na parang in a way na, okay, maganda to sa Zoom mo. Pag nag-Zoom ka, maganda to, ito yung background. So like for for example, also rag stretches, like what I mentioned earlier, they're mostly a bag and accessories company. They also released um, some home items, katulad nung nakikita niyo po dyan na mga pillowcases, but also using local weaves. So yun nga, parang pwedeng gamitin when you're working from home or it's a, just a nice background for when you're doing your Zoom videos. So this is one angle that people do. Um, another, I remember si Ms. Um, Alo kanina mentioned something about emotional um, buying. So it was actually, you can actually see from a lot of brands that 
they are capitalizing on happy purchases. So happy purchases are those na parang pag makita mo, pag binili mo, masaya ka. By just seeing it and using it, um, it brightens your day. So like these brands, Zara Juan um, is a bad company. Um, they did ito mga nice na parang very, uh, ano ba tawag dito? Papapareminis ka kasi lumang stereo. And then they had a partnership with Ligo Sardine. So imagine nyo yung bag, yung maliit na can, ginawa nilang malaking, malaking can na um, bag na Ligo Sardines. And then Mara Pinion here, the, sh the shoes. This design is made of, um, I, this design is a Tarsier. So cute siya, cutesy. And then Tablescape PH did like parang mga nice for um, Instagram, mga pang picture, mga pang add dun sa mga um, pag nagpipicture kayo ng dishes. So these ones, these are actually not cheap items. So these are um, a bit more on the higher end, but people don't mind spending as long as it makes them happy. Kasi nga po, di ba, right now, um, ang labanan is, pa paano ka ba, paano ka mapapansin? Paano ka, paano ito choose na ikaw yung bibilhin? So for here, um, a lot of people choose to buy because of the emotions, because it makes them happy, um, and it doesn't matter kung medyo mahal. So another angle is about learning new things. So people are mostly stuck at home, so they want to um, learn more, um, or medals na gagawin, hindi sila ma-board. So there are companies that um, tried to address this. So there are those that offered workshops um, that are now online. Um, one of this is the one in the middle, Art of Yarn. So she does mga weaving workshops. But because of the pandemic, she moved online then. So she would send these kits that you see here in the photo. And then she would conduct an online session. And you can create your own weave or tapestry at home. For me, for Workshops by Tal, I used to conduct um, my um, in-person workshops like sandal making, shoe entrepreneurship. Pero because of the pandemic, nga, I shifted online. I would be sending materials na lang to my um, students and then we would have the session online. So another reason why people buy is um, the rise of new essentials. So, of course, nandiyan yung ating mga masks. So, a lot of people um, rode into the um, mask trend. So, merong iba mas maaga. Um, the one here in the middle is by um, Fino Leather. So, this is a little bit more expensive, but it also caught on kasi it's very, it makes you happy. It's also different. It's it's really finely made. So, even though medyo, sa totoo lang, medyo late ng konti yung pagpasok nila, but it uh, got people's attention because it's different from the usual masks that was out there. Um, some also addressed like needs, like for example, leather crafting companies gumawa ng like uh, mga pang -lagay lagayan ng alcohol or for the frontliners. Yung sa middle um, gumawa siya parang pang push sa mga elevators or mga buttons. So, ito, mga parang new ways of addressing um, the needs of the people. And then, of course, the rise of the need for PPEs or parang PPEs na hindi masyadong mukhang, um, yung parang pwede mo rin pang labas. So, companies like Gouache and Drags to Riches made their own versions of the PPE na are also stylish, um, not just um, protecting you. Another reason why people buy is right now, meron na pong um, mas collective na mindset. Um, people are thinking more um, us or tayo versus me versus ako lang. So what is my purchase about? Why am, um, anong kinatutunguhan ng aking pagbili? Um, what is the impact that this is making on the world, on other people, especially right now that a lot of um, people need um, resources and a lot of people are having a hard time. So with my small contribution of buying something, um, what happens to it? So let's discuss that a bit further um, and how brands communicate that 
So first is they, they, they communicate the materials and sourcing, the importance of this. So for example, you're sourcing pala from um, a community um, like this one, the, the slippers from Zapateria, um, everything is locally handmade, local materials. Um, the cufflinks from Amami are traditional, by, uh, made by tambuli makers. And then Mako here makes um, the bags that are made of ano po yan, mga tetra packs and mga uh, junk, uh, junk food wrappers that are made into a, a bag. So when they communicate this, they, they share, when they post it online, when they um, share their products, they also share about the materials, they also share where it's from kasi important yun um, from the buyers. Um, that you know this this impacts something or someone, either the environment or other people or our culture or community. Another is um, communicating about the hands that made your products. Um, sino yung gumawa? For example, um, katulad kanina, uh, I heard parang someone. Um, parang PWDs po yata, yung beneficiaries ninyo, um, you can communicate that. People like seeing that. Sino yung gumawa? Meron ba akong natulungan? And they like seeing the faces. Um, for us, we do that as well. We share them about uh, our people, how the process is made, sino sila, ano pangalan nila, taga saan sila, and um, any other relevant information that humanizes this whole um, process of them purchasing from you. Another way that um, brands communicate is doing impact reports. So online, they even share um, what they're doing and how they're doing it. Like for example, um, for example, um, they're giving fair wages. They really break down um, how they pay they, their people, how their costs are done. So for example, mataas yung pricing nyo, um, higher end yung product nyo, because you are supporting and you're enabling others, so mas mataas din yung cost nyo. If you're able to show that, people will appreciate it. If you actually are transparent and you show this, they would want to, to read about it and you'll increase engagement with your um, clients. So another thing that changed right now during the pandemic is how um, people want to be talked to. So first is uh, safe. So it's the uh, safety story and simplicity that matters. Okay. So for safety, they want to hear um, that your team is safe while doing your products, that your products are safe, and of course that their transaction with you is safe. Um, they also um, clients also want to understand what you're doing. So for example, like ngayon, di ba po, nag-isip yun na naman, may mga nag-shutdown na companies. So um, a lot of people, they release memos or at least a post na parang, oh, we're on break, we have to prioritize the health of our people. And people, and the clients don't understand this because they, um, we're all going through this anyway. So they understand that as long as you let them know. And then people also um, want to understand the story of the process, the designs, and the story of the people. So, paano po ba to? So, first, um, explain natin. Um, share natin, ano ba yung kwento? Um, sa designs ba? Sa inspiration ba? Sa meaning? Whatever it is, kung anong kwento ng produkto ninyo. Kung Kung pagkain yan, pwede rin naman na um, paano ginawa, saan nanggaling yung mga um, inyong um, supplies or ingredients, may something special ba about this. Um, like for these, um, for these brands that you see here, so there's something about um, the jeepney, something about for Mara, it's the French Bulldog and the mask. For Mako, it's the cap, simpleng cap lang, pero bawat stitch pala may ibig sabihin because these are made by the Bilaan community. So these are important things. Gusto nilang malaman that the clients want to understand. And then of course, like similar to what I mentioned before, people want to understand, uh, your clients want to understand people and processes. 
So how it's made. So again, if you're food, baka you can showcase um, the process itself habang ginagawa ninyo. Na-thrill yung mga tao na parang, ay, meron ka palang special process na ginagawa pag nagbibake ka. Something like that. Or if you're a prod or let's say you're a uh, crafts item, baka merong special na method or technique that your makers are using to create your product. Or let's say you're a service, baka naman you're a service. There are certain methods that you that's different from um, from other companies that you're doing, or maybe it's even their safety procedures or something like that. Um, Last, they also want to understand that it's simple to access your products. Na madali lang po kayong mahanap at madali bilhin ang inyong products. So, so of course, you have to um, let people know how you're operating in the new normal. How they'll find you, how they'll pay, how they'll receive, and how they'll get to talk to you if they, need, they have other concerns after they purchase from you. So first is how they can find you. So kanina nga po na mention ni Ms. Alo, you know, um, the social media. Right now, it's very crucial. A lot of um, transactions right now is and businesses are done online. So pinaka important, you have your Facebook, you have your Instagram. Um, you can may iba meron ding Twitter, YouTube, or TikTok pa. <laughs> um, but you can also have your own e-commerce platforms like um, sa Facebook Marketplace. You can also sell on Carousel, on Shopee, Lazada, or if you have your own website na hosted, let's say, by Shopify. So at least you have some means of selling online where people can find you online. That's very important right now. And the next is how they can pay you. So again, the help. Um, we're trying to limit interactions, physical interactions. A lot of transactions should be done online. Na. So, pinaka important um, is to have at least siguro, one to three uh, methods of payment that they can use. So, pinaka madali po, to be honest, is GCash right now. Um, but there are others like Smart Padala, Paymaya. Kapag ang client niyo po, medyo mas sa probinsya, yung mga Palawan, Cebuana. Um, but it's also beneficial if you have um, B at least two major banks like BTO and BPI. Um, and if you have international clients, um, you can have um, PayPal, TransferWise, and Remitly as um, help for you to get payments online. If you have PayPal, people can already pay you um, by a credit card. And then next po, how to get their orders. So of course, paano ba nila matatanggap pag nag-order sila sa'yo? Before, syempre, mas okay pa rin mag-meet up or go to your store, personal, um, physical store. Pero right now, a lot of it is like deliveries. So we have our same-day deliveries, yung mga Lala Move, Grab, Transportify, Mr. Speedy, um, Tok Tok. Um, and then you also have your regular couriers like LBC, JRS. For, these are mostly for provincial. But then for international, you have your uh, FedEx, DHL. LBC also does international and JRS. But yeah, so you have to communicate this very clearly on your um, platforms, how they'll also be able to get their orders. And then last, of course, kung meron pa silang other concerns, you must be very easy to talk to. So either through your social media platforms or you should put out your number or the messaging platforms that you use like WhatsApp, Viber, or Telegram or your email address. So make sure lang po sinasagot natin ito kasi naiinis yung clients kapag hindi natin sila sinasagot. So right now, um, that everyone is um, understand everything is a little bit slow mabagal po lahat so they're more patient right now but um, inform them beforehand if they need to wait so for example yung product nyo po pre-order let's say um, kailangan mag-order muna sila mga five days ahead or something if they want a cake so make sure you up you um you let them know beforehand and then you update them um every step of the way if you can na parang ginagawa na po on the way na po sa inyo because this is important this is your um this is their customer journey and then um it's also good to um, ask and listen to get their feedback to get their 
um, insight, let's say, what they like about your product or service, how is their customer service, or let's say, if they want more other kinds of products pa, or what made them happy when they bought from you. Um, you can do this siguro via text or an online form or some means of communicating with them after they buy from you. Oh, sorry. Um, so right now, people are asking, like, how much are the clients spending right now? It varies, but definitely a lot of, for majority of people, the basket size really got smaller. So, ibig sabihin kung nung dati po, ang basket size nila isang cart na pang grocery, isang trolley na pang grocery. Ngayon, maliit na basket na lang. It's just a smaller basket. But a lot of times, these purchases become more meaningful. So, there are those, of course, like Ms. Alo mentioned earlier, that are just very price conscious. But there are also people that are also that are looking into purchases na mas nakaka um, tulong or mas may meaning pagbili nila. So how do you get them to choose you? Usually, you have to be able to address what, some kind of need that they have. Um, it also helps if you're contributing to the community or you're easing a pain point. So, these pain points, maliit na bagay lang. Like, for example, yung kanina na pang push ng button sa elevator. Maliit lang yun na pain point na ayoko madumihan yung delivery ko when I'm um, pushing elevators and buttons. But it eases their pain so they're willing to pay for it. Um, for example, um, yung mga nauso, yung mga, what they call it, yung ear saver for the masks that helps you um, hindi sumakit yung tenga with the mask. Those are pain points, simple pain points that people get to address. And you should communicate like, oh, I am easing this pain point for you. So they'll be more, um, uh, they'll be more convinced to buy from you instead. So, okay, so this is just a little bit short. I'll share a little bit about how some of the brands survived naman and how they adapted. Um, so, sabi nga nila, adapt, innovate, innovate, pivot, or die. So, sa totoo lang po, yes, kung negosyo po kayo, um, we have no choice. We should either adapt, innovate, innovate pivot, or our business will die. Um, the first thing that you should do is at least know your assets and how you can use them. So for us, um, during this pandemic, we realized, okay, we have a lot of tela, a lot of local weaves. So that's the first thing that we actually did. We did uh, masks. We did some products that matches our shoes even. So parang, I even launched a campaign na matching sapatos and your mask when people um, were interested in that. And then, um, for some other brands, um, they use also what they have. Like, for example, yeah, they created pillows, they created, kung meron sila mga extra retaso, they made it into bags, into accessories, like earrings. Because these are natutulog na. These are um, assets that are just sleeping, just not being profitable for you. So, if um, it's there, think of a creative way that you can use this to... Um, at least uh, gain some income from it. Next, um, kailangan po watchful tayo. We have to be um, very sensitive in um, knowing the trends. Like for example, you know, the plantitas, the PPE craze, the mask craze, the loungewear. We have to um, kind of latch on it fast kasi para ma-maximize niyo yung profit. Otherwise, if you're coming in a little bit late, you have to be very innovative. You have to be very different already from what's out, uh, what's out there. Otherwise, they're just not going to notice you because you're just going to be like everyone else already that's out there. Um, you also have to adapt or innovate and understand people's changing needs. Like for example here, si Rags to Riches, um, Meron naman silang mga clothing wear, but because people nga ngayon, they don't want to spend so much, they created this um, um, top na reversible, parang multi-way siya. Pwede mong i-flip-flip yung different panels para mag-iba-iba yung look. And then, um, Soul Flower is a studio that does workshops. So, that is physical workshops. They adapted and did um, online workshops. And then for me, for Riske, I did other products. Like what I'm wearing right now, this is a, in the one in the picture, it's a neck piece. 
na para siyang ano lang um, kasi nga mainit mag scarf naman tapos minsan upper bo- pag nag zoom meeting ka upper body mo lang naman kita so i made a i collaborate with the community and we did parang neck piece tatanggalin mo lang siya and then you're you're good um hindi siya masyadong mainit it's skype na simple t-shirt ka okay ka na mukha ka nang presentable and then um i also innovated a little bit in terms of the best how i'm communicating to my client online so before po when, whenever i um i have clients who want to um have their own shoe business with us so kami magma-manufacture we have to go through this entire process of um uh messaging them um basically matagal na transaction so i created um, a website na they can just basically um, pick um, designs they want, um, add their branding, and then start their own business. Um, I did that for the website. And then, of course, there's also, um, in terms of marketing, you can also collaborate. Um, by collaborating, you are um, working working with other companies. You're also tapping their network. Like, for example, here, this, these are um, products um, collaborated by Alessa Andralanot of Life After Breakfast. So she's a, so she's a designer. Um, so she collaborated with Havaianas, with Tupperware brand um, to create these uh, products. So kumbaga, na-increase yung value for the existing brand. And then for her also, she's gaining um, more um, traction because she's working with big brands. So um, to summarize, so this is my last point. Sorry, I went a little bit over. Um, you have to understand uh, why they buy, how they want to be talked to, um, of course, the safety, story, and simplicity, and why they should choose to buy from you. Um, yun yung pinaka-important. So just um, think about those points and uh, analyze your business, analyze your products, and how you'll communicate, how you'll market your products better para they'll, you'll be more attractive to them. Um, and lastly, just my little tip, you know, keep moving, keep learning, keep creating. Because, you know, life goes on, honestly, with or without us. So let's just go go with it. Let's just, um, tuloy lang po ang buhay. Um, and we can all um, go through this together. So thank you very much. And uh, if you have questions, uh, feel free to ask if we still have some time. Thank you very much, Tal. Ang napahaganda ng presentation. Thank you so yes. much. Ang dami ko natutunan on a personal level, no? Um, at na-realize ko rin na, ay, oo nga, ito pala yung mga gusto ko. <laughs> ito pala yung market nitong mga Ikaw produkto pala. na to. <laughs> Na-add to cart ba na ba, Ed? <laughs> oo, ang dami ko nang i-add to cart. Butas na naman yung bulsa ko nito. But anyway, I'm sure ang dami rito mga entrepreneurs natin uh, who are have burning questions now so we now open the floor to our uh, entrepreneurs to ask tal your burning questions yes sino po ang gusto nating give po na as tribute pwede po mag raise ng hand or pwede rin po mag chat kapo may particular question kaya about your own businesses um how we can ha, um how you can connect to clients right now yes Tal, um, every when yung workshop nyo for people na who want to join? Um, scheduled naman. Usually, I would have at least once a month for um, entrepreneurship and sandal making. Pero there are a lot of... Actually, ano nga ngayon eh? Sobrang dami nagko-conduct ng workshops right now. You can even use... Some people can even use it as a new way to get business. So, for example... Mm-hmm. Um, ano sila, talagang magaling sila gumawa ng cake. Baka gusto nila mag-turo um, ng how to bake uh, muffins, for example. Yung ganun, parang very, parang ipapaliitin mo for people to digest it. Yeah, someone conducts classes din daw, si Cathy Corn James. What do you do po, ma'am? Hi, I teach candle making, perfume making, so making, shampoo bar making, oh. lato making. <laughs> How is it so far? Um, I had a hard time to transition the online. I mean, from the in-person to online. Because we had to parang, 
put all the ingredients in smaller yes. bottles. So that was really hard. The sourcing of that yeah. was really hard. But once that was all set, it, it's okay naman. And I prefer it more than having in person na. Mm-mm. Actually, ako rin medyo. <laughs> Kasi parang ang struggle lang niya is setting it up. Like parang doing your presentations and then you know, creating your kits. But eventually, okay na siya. Um, Beth, you turned on your video. Did you want to say something? Ah, naka-mute ka po. Miss Beth, naka-mute po kayo? Ayan po. Ayan. Hello po. Hi, Miss Beth. Ah, hindi po namin kayo marinig. Sorry ma'am, hindi po namin kayo marinig. You can chat din po your question or anything you want to say. Anyone po who still wish to say or ask something? Mayroon po ba kayo mga tanong? <laughs> Sobrang informative daw tal. Kaya, Thank you. <laughs> ano, mga hugot ko yan. <laughs> yeah, I feel it. <laughs> sariling hugot and sariling struggles. Super Pare-pare informative. Sa- Sabi yeah. ko, ah, so ganito pala mag-isip yung mga entrepreneurs on how to catch the customers. <laughs> yes. And isa na ka. Oo, na-catch na So like, for uh, example, like I have this, um, ano ba to? Itong, di ba, oh, nice. toys, mga tetra packs. Ah, uh, yes. So matagal na to, ganyan. I I I I have a huge fondness for mga Filipino products. Like meron din ako ganito, yung mga weave na ganyan. <laughs> like nakakalat siya all over. <laughs> I really like mga Filipino products. So nung pagkakita ko ng presentation yeah. talaga, ah, so ito pala yung pang-hook nila. <laughs> well, I have yeah. a question. Yes. Yeah. How do you divide your able to come up with new ideas like for example, the bedroom slippers? Um, and because it, I think you mentioned it's because you identified na in the people now, di naman na sila lumalabas, so bakit sila bibili ng shoes. Um, in identifying, uh, uh, bathroom, uh, bed, uh, sorry, bedroom slippers kaya, parang what was the process na mm. na-identify mo na, ay, baka ito yung demand na where medyo, we can tap into. Medyo matagal nga yun eh, honestly. Kasi parang, it, it can't be, misan, mabilis. Pero for this, parang nouna, go wonder, oh my gosh, paano baka, paano baka may mabibenta ka ng sapatos? Hindi lumalabas yung mga tao. Um, and then I think that one in particular, someone made a suggestion. Na parang, try nyo kaya ito. Pero iba pa nga yun eh. Very different yung sinasuggest sa amin. Tapos naisip ko, well, parang yung mga furry, furry, yung mga velvet. And then I realized, okay, wait, why will I do that? ba? Diba? Meron naman kami mga weaves. Ito yung may iba. Parang it makes it different. So, I went through that. Tapos, parang, honestly, nung tinry ko siya, kasi nag-try lang talaga ako isang sample. Kasi nagpagawa lang ko ng sample, pinost ko. And then it was received well. So parang that's how I do it. Like you don't even have to parang risk too much agad. You can just parang test it out. You release something. Misan it works, misan hindi. Like this next scarf, uh, surprisingly, it's working. And then gulat ako. Well, I, I was very happy na parang people found the idea parang smart. Kasi parang tanggalin mo lang, okay ka na, chill ka na ulit. And then you put it on, mukha ka ng professional. Um, but I had some ideas na hindi masyado nag-work. Like, for example, um, I I also tried the pillowcase. Uh, yung parang mga pillowcase using weaves. So, I tried some na parang merong mga retaso from our weaves. Hindi masyado nag-work. <laughs> Kasi um, parang mababa yung perceived value. And then for us, mababa, mataas naman yung cost namin for it. Kasi we have the community made it. So, parang... Um, it didn't work on that level. So, try and error. Sometimes you hit on something. <laughs> and it works. And just don't be afraid to try. I think I like the point that you mentioned on a weekend, just test it first. Like, hindi kailangan na, if mass produce ako, tapos yeah. chaho, to try. <laughs> Nakakatakot yung risk, no? <laughs> diba? Subukan mo muna, or misan, baka hindi naman pwedeng isa lang, baka pwede naman na um, small batch lang muna. 
Pero a lot of times naman po ang payag, let's say, especially if you're creating a product, just make a sample and then do it on a pre-order basis. Let's say, um, para let's say, kuha ka na, oh, first 10 orders, you get a discount or something like that. And then, um, at least, kuha na kayo ng down payment for that. And then, your first batch ng gagawin, paid for na. You don't even have to get it out of your own pocket. You can try those um, techniques. <laughs> and and sabi nga ni Tal na all she needed to do was to create a prototype and then post it online. And then yeah. it gained traction na, no? So, yun yung maganda dun sa digital marketing and digital yes. platforms that we have. All you need to do, it's, it's like free advertising na, free marketing. Just post it online because everyone now is online. So, yes. yun din. Sabi nga ni Ms. Elaine Tangan, yes, it's called the minimum viable product. Um, yes, tama po. Um, at least, um, kumbaga, ano yung bibenta sa iyo, di ba? Or minsan, ginagawa ko naman, I do, um, for example, for this for the scarf, um, nagpa, nagpa-produce ako ng three colors. And then, I, I just did a small batch. Tapos, from the first batch, that's when I realized, okay, it's the black that sells more. So, I should order more of the black. Stuff like that. Yes. So um, we have a question. Uh, Jerby from Catacorn Dreams is raising her hand. Yes, po. Hi. Hi. Yes, po. Hi, Ms. Jerby. Papakita na ako. Okay, <laughs> right. so, yeah, I just want to share as well because I experienced the same hurdle during the pandemic. Our anchor product is basically shampoo bars, as I've mentioned. So during the pandemic, I realized that wala nang maliligo. <laughs> so the, the, the demand really dipped. I really felt the dip na parang, oh my gosh, wala nang naliligo kahit summer na summer, walang naliligo. Um, and so we had to diversify. Mm-hmm. We had to, like, yung parang si Mistal, we had to look for other things to sell with our resources, kung ano na yung meron sa amin. Kasi isa rin sa mga problem last year, the supply chain was so much um, affected. So parang you can't really do anything but to work on whatever you had. So parang even up to now, a year after, we are still parang trying the waters kung ano yung products na pwede namin ibenta with like the specific skills that, that we already have or the specific resource that we already have. Although we understand na mas okay na yung supply chain ngayon. So parang ganun, trial and error din talaga siya. And what's good about now is that most people have adopted na to the online retailing and online consuming process. Unlike before, kasi yung market namin medyo hindi rin teki, um, medyo nahirapan kami talaga i-contact sila. So, yun. That's all. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank Totoo you. yun. Um, yeah. May isa nga ako, buti, yeah, totoo pala yung hindi naliligo. Kasi may isa naman akong friend na yung business nila, parang sunscreen, mga sunscreen bars naman. Eh, sino naman nagbe-beach? Sino lumalabas sa araw na sa bahay nga lang, di ba? So, yun. So, a, lo- a lot of products became irrelevant, to be honest. But you have to change a bit. Correct. <laughs> Bumaba yung demand. So anyway, um, do we have a few more questions perhaps? Oh, uh, si Boundless. Uh, from Boundless. Yes, so, ma'am Jo, go ahead. Sorry na ako makapagpakita ha. Kasi di pa ako naliligo. <laughs> Guilty po ba kayo sa hindi naliligo? <laughs> at saka, at saka naka, naka, hindi, hindi nga ako nakachinelas, nakatapak lang. <laughs> okay lang po. Anyway, yes, Yung ano, very nice yung presentation coming from a millennial, uh, second generation, new generation of entrepreneurs. Ang question ko kasi, uh, a little sharing na rin. Uh, we're doing cookies, which everybody now is uh, also doing. Diba? <laughs> so lahat ngayon nagkukuk eh, lahat ngayon nagbibake, lahat ngayon nag online ng food. So kumbaga, we're... Uh, really competing neck to neck with other ano online sellers kaya hindi rin kami maka push through with uh, uh, our selling so siguro collaborate i'm thinking of collaborate with other will it work if we or oh, it will be very difficult to collaborate with established uh, bake shops or we also do printing kasi on mugs and t-shirts uh, is collaboration the next step for us? 
Okay, ma'am. So, ma'am, first po, um, ano nga po ulit yung, sino nga po ulit beneficiaries niya po? You're, I remember you said you're a social enterprise ba po? Yeah. Uh, ang beneficiaries ng program namin is yung uh, persons with uh, neurodevelopmental or yung mga may autism, may Down syndrome, uh, intellectual disability. So it's not, uh, it's really a tan- it's a really a family business kasi most of them have to be assisted naman in doing baking and printing. Okay. Sige ma'am. So actually, kasama po yun sa narinig ko po, medyo in-ask niya yung kanina kay Ms. Alo. Um, first po, I think uh, maganda na i-communicate talaga really well that they're also, um, they're the ones that you're uh, benefiting. As in, communicate through pictures, the process, and then um, kahit parang humanizing story na para, stories na parang ilang taon sila, um, ano yung condition nila, how, how many they are able to um, produce in a day. Kasi this is your, basically your edge um, over others. Ito yung kakaiba po sa inyo. That's why they would choose your um, um, your business instead. Kasi nga sabi nyo, ang dami ng cookies everywhere. But if they know that it goes to people, it provides jobs to PWD, um, PWDs or um, persons with disabilities, um, mas uh, may entice po sila. The idea about collaboration is good. Um, I suggest maybe collaborate with someone uh, with a business na hindi directly related nga po sa inyo actually. Um, kasi for us, we we do that a lot. Like for example, um, like ako, I had a collaboration with Mazda. Um, kotse po yun. But I use their spare parts to create a shoe design. Parang ganun, uh, not directly related or for example, um, kunyari po sa inyo cookies, baka pwede kayo mag-collaborate with um, a company na, I don't know, um, milk for example, that would work well with your, let's say, Carabao Milk Company. Parang gagawa kayo ng tandem na your products will work well together, will taste well together. Parang ganun. So, um, pwede po na hindi directly related. Actually, mas maganda kasi it becomes very different. Tapos natatap nyo rin po yung market of a different industry na hindi lang dun sa baking um, or um, goods, uh, para big goods uh, category. Pero pwede nyo pong gawin talaga yun, definitely. Thank you, ma'am, for the question. Wow. Okay, thank you. Great ideas. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Jo, and thank you, Tal, for that. So again, in the interest of time, if you have any questions, you may type it in our chat box and Tal, if she's still willing to be here, sure. um, pwede naman niyang sagutin doon sa ating chat box. Okay? Um, so um, thank you, Tal, very much no, for that wonderful, wonderful uh, lecture. Ang ganda. Ako rin, personal level, ang dami ko natutunan. So uh, I'd like to call on Mina to introduce, I guess, our next uh, parang advertisement or speaker. Sige, um, it's maybe we can ano, take a photo first if ah, talo sige. go. Sure. Oh, yes, yes please. Okay, yes. sige. Okay po. Baka, kahit turn on your videos. Turn on your videos. Kahit hindi po naligo, okay lang. Oo nga. <laughs> Ginam Jer, biro makakanta lang sa phone. Hindi, biro lang. <laughs> okay, ayan. Ayan. Ayan lang ako rin. Ano ba itong camera ko? Pambihira. Ayan. Meron pa po bang ano mag-o-on ng video? Yan, wag na po tayong mahiya, okay lang. Hindi naman tayo ano stranger sa isa't isa. Ayan. Ayan. Okay, sige. I think yung iba ayo. Okay, one, two, three, smile. Okay na po. Yay! All right. So, thank you. Thank you so much, Ta. Thank you very much po. Thank you everyone. And thank you for your questions po, yung mga nagtanong. Okay. Sige, Sige. Thank you. So, uh, me- I'll proceed to the next part. This will just be quick. I would just like to share an opportunity to the um to our participants regarding yung partnership natin with Union Bank. So Union Bank is one of the partners of Live Local, and we have this um local platform called Union Bank Global Linker. Actually, it's not just local; it um it's international. But locally, you can create your own profile. So right now, um in the coming weeks, we will have um Union Bank during the financial wellness session, which is um two weeks before the end of our um two weeks before our graduation. 
um, union back representatives will um, come in and discuss um, yung global linker nila na advocacy. So through global linker, it's like a local marketplace wherein um, yung mga entrepreneurs na partners natin will have the chance to have their own e-commerce um, page wherein they can interact with different um um, other linkers, um, not just in the Philippines but globally, and then pwede kayo mag-conduct ng business here by selling your product. So you can even post your entire catalog of products here in the global linker page. And later on, we'll discuss yung mga um, detailed step-by-step on how you can maximize this opportunity as part of our live local community. So um, as a pre-work, um, Union Bank is asking for the live local entrepreneurs to be added to a Viber group so that representatives from Union Bank can um, touch base with you um, regarding yung mga needs nyo in your business. And it can also be um, yung mga needs nyo for um, MSME banking. So yun lang. So, it's reminders na. Okay, thank you, Mina. So, ayan yung ating Union Bank Global Linker. So, ang last part ng ating uh, module for today, ay, a synchronous session, is our reminder. So, first of all, those who have already received their registration link for the Canvas platform, please do sign up. And for those who are interested to sign up for, to sign up for the Canvas uh, course on our uh, entrepreneurship pro project, um, please send us a message and we can send to you the Canvas link to register, okay? It's a six-module um, class no, that is available online through the Canvas platform. It's free. You don't have to pay for anything. Nandun lahat ng lectures ng ating mga resource persons. And again, libre ito. You just have to interact, okay? So yun for our Canvas platform reminder. And second, let me just quickly show you our... Um, mentors for this project no just a brief brief introduction we have a total of nine mentors let me just share my screen this this can also be found in our canvas platform no so if you click on module zero uh, meet the live local th team you will find there uh, the profile of the founders that's mina janet and myself and also the mentor. So we have John Maynard Gan, April Valle, Alo Laksam, Doc Alo, uh, Dia Lakaba, we have Mina and Janet, of course, Roxanne and Mam Wit. So these are all our mentors for the mentorship program of the Live Local PH. Um, ang mga yani dito is kayong mga entrepreneurs who are included in the project will be paired up with a specific mentor. Uh, you will be matched based on your profile. So you will not be alone in this journey. So kung may mga tanong kayo and may mga plano kayong mga plans that you want to execute, you may talk to your mentor. Mina, uh, do we have already a schedule when the mentorship program will be rolled out or kung kailan sila mag-prepare? At kahit lang ano, tentative timeline? Yeah, expect um, communications na lang within the next two weeks yung um, matching and at the same time yung mga um, contact details of your mentor so that you can set up a group or a messenger um, group with your mentors and um, identify your schedules for meetups and sessions. All right. Okay. So thank you for that. And last but not the least, reminder lang yung mga entrepreneurs na kasama sa ating project. I will be emailing you soon because we need to do an entrepreneur profile. You know, just to get the basics of your business. Um, some probably quotable quotes from you. Your photos that you want to be included in your profile. No, because I will also be featuring some of you in our. Um, social media platforms. Okay, so again, Canvas, sign up, don't forget. Um, your mentorship program will be rolling out soon and also the entrepreneur's profile. Okay, so Janet, Mina, do we ha still have any reminders on your end? Oh, perhaps the feedback. Uh, feedback form. Mm -hmm. So the feedback form is will be posted by Janet on our chat box and we would greatly appreciate if you can answer our feedback form because this helps us improve our um, synchronous and, and asynchronous sessions. Magandang maganda yung feedback. We would greatly appreciate that. I'll email the link. And thank you so much for those who uh, answered pala in their previous uh, masterclass. Yes. So it really helps us. I'll just email it again to everybody. Yes. Thank you, Janet. So um, before we finally adjourn, Mina, Janet, anymore, and also uh, other from, from our entrepreneurs? 
Lana, watch out for the invite for the next session, um, which is going to be brand presence, um, online brand presence, which is very important to yes. um, thriving in the new normal. So, yes. Ito thank yung... you so much for your time and we, uh, sorry because we extend tayo, but I oh, do hope we, um, you enjoyed the session um, and the sharing from Ms. Tal and Ms. Alo. All right. So, so sige, thank you so much and we'll see you next Saturday. Thank you po. Thank oh. you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so much.